figuring out what the density was that way, um, you get about one third of the value that was predicted from theory or that people expected. And for a while, the theorists would give you those thin smiles and they'd say, well, you know, this work is very difficult and why don't you continue with it a little more because the correct answer is one and you're only getting an answer of one third. Go back and do some more. So we, people did go back and do more and they kept getting this answer of a third. Now, you can make the universe spatially flat using a sufficient amount of either matter or energy. So if space is flat, and the amount of matter is much too small to account for that, then somewhere in space, there must be a stupendously large source of energy that, up to now, has been completely overlooked. So by, I would say by about 1995 or so, people were really kind of worried about this problem, that the, the theory predicted a value of one, the observation showed one third, and it didn't look like the observations were wrong. They weren't really moving. So, uh, some people used the powerful theoretical method of subtraction. And they said, gee, if the total is one, and all we see is a third, there must be two thirds missing. And people were brave enough to say, well, maybe it's the cosmological constant. At the, about the same time, this is when the supernova observations were uh, just getting underway. And by 1997 or eight, the, it was pretty clear that there was a result from the supernova data which suggested acceleration, which could be attributed to this funny stuff that Einstein had thought of back in 1916 for all the wrong reasons, which has the tendency to make the universe expand faster or that pushes in the opposite direction of uh, gravity. It looks like we're getting the problem right for the first time, or at least we're beginning to see what the problem is for the first time. So I have this sense of, you know, sort of the shutters banging open and suddenly we get a clear view of what it is we're supposed to be doing. And it's only in the last few years that that's happened. Nevertheless, I have to admit, I really was very uneasy when we got these results. I really felt that um, having a cosmological constant was somehow, you know, morally bad and that we just shouldn't have that. But that helps you have skepticism about your own work, which is a good thing. But in the end, you know, you just have to look at the data and see what it tells you. And it certainly hints, well, more than hints, it suggests, well, maybe a little more than that. It seems to be telling us that we live in an accelerating universe. It wasn't an easy adjustment at first. The scientists are learning to live with the idea of an accelerating universe. At times, though, some of them confess to feeling a bit like the White Queen, who boasted that with practice, she had learned to believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Dark energy, or the cosmological constant, whatever you choose to call it, it's weird stuff. And even the experts feel challenged to get their minds around it. The accelerating universe takes some getting used to. It's still too early to rule anything out definitively, but the key point is that unlike cosmology of a decade or two ago when it was very hard to make new experiments that could res resolve these issues, now it is possible and all we need to do is wait a little longer with ever better equipment and better techniques and this matter will be resolved. And I would predict, and I think here I'm in the majority with most astronomers, that based on these new findings, dark energy is here to stay. We have to get used to it. The physicists had ideas about what the dark matter could be, various exotic particles. The physicists are largely stumped on dark energy, it's some weird field energy that evidently dominates the whole darn universe that uh, doesn't cluster, doesn't fall into galaxies, just a smooth stuff that provides pressure that, you know, is pushing the universe out. It's just bizarre. And the universe has begun to speed up its uh, expansion, and uh, this presumably has not happened since the very beginning of the universe when the inflationary episode occurred, and now it's beginning again. And if anybody can tell you that they understand why this is happening, uh, they are, don't believe them for a moment, because we are clueless as to why the universe should be so complicated as to contain all these Baroque components. There's nothing like cosmology to make you feel humble. 
The universe is so large, and our place in it so small, our understanding so limited. The cosmos abounds with mysteries, yet the clues to solve them are out there, too. A thrill of discovery awaits us around every corner. The dark energy is a complete surprise. First of all, it's spread uniformly through the universe, so it has no particular effect on stars. It's just a property of space. It's a property of the vacuum. It's like saying, forget about the rest of the universe. Forget about all the stuff you know about the universe. The dominant stuff in it, by a small margin, because they're nearly equal, but the dominant stuff is, is just a property of space itself. And that's really weird, because we can't create it, we can't measure it in other ways. There's no laboratory evidence for a non-zero energy for the vacuum. Yet this is what we're saying, that, the, that empty space has a non-zero energy. My own view is that we have a lot more work to do, because we don't know what the one-third is, the dark matter. Nobody really knows what that stuff is. And we don't know what this dark energy is either. And we've piled strangeness upon strangeness and may yet go on doing so. And at one deep level, I would argue that that's no argument against something being true or not. In other words, how strange it appears to us is no measure of anything except that we're in a special situation in the universe. Cosmologists from around the world are already planning a new generation of powerful instruments to probe the far reaches of space. In addition to testing the accelerating universe model, they want to look back to the era when the first stars lit up 11 or 12 billion years ago. They want to witness the birth of galaxies. And there's simply no telling where that quest will lead. The universe delights in surprising us. It may yet turn this whole story on its head. Perhaps to the next generation, the Big Bang will seem as quaint and unreal as the Earth-centered universe of the Middle Ages. Well, people often ask, what use is this cosmological information? After all, we're here. It doesn't matter what the future of the universe is 100 billion years from now, any more than it really matters how we came to be here over the past 10 or 15 billion years. And to someone who truly holds this view, there is no good answer, and cosmology becomes sort of a plaything of the other people. But for those of us who are engaged in it, of course, it's impossible to avoid the belief that cosmology is good for the soul, that it cheers us up as inquisitive beings to know something about our origins and our possible futures. It's fun to think there are people who are working night and day to try to supply the answers to these questions. So, that's our picture of the cosmos as far as it's understood at the beginning of the 21st century. If you ever get the feeling that not only is your whole world coming apart at the seams, but it's unraveling faster all the time, well, at least you're not alone. If the cosmologists have got the big picture correct, it's happening to the whole universe and will only get worse. So we should enjoy the place while we can before time and space go rushing off in all directions.